Hello there. Welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson, and I am very happy to have you here with me today. Please like, comment, subscribe, or share this video. That would be fun for you, for me. Tell people what you think is interesting in this world. So today is another day of working on our self-expression art journal. <laughs> Look what I did in front. I love this so much because listen. Isn't that cool? So these are the little, um, I think they're meant to be keychain tags to tell you which key belongs to which office or something like that. And... I had these in the middle of the book, but they're so lumpy and thick that it was making writing in the book be crazy. So what I did was I put a pocket here on the inside of the um, book and I lined up these little cards and... Um, Pocket's actually kind of a, a generous pocket, and so these were wiggling all around, so I added in a couple of envelopes. My other envelope oh, is here. Anyway, that was way cool. I mean, it just worked out really nicely. <laughs> and it's sort of silly because I like the noise so much. So I've been writing in my journal this red um, envelope. The title of that writing is Who Am I? So that's been kind of fun to work on. I don't know. I'm a little confused about that myself. I don't know if I have shown you this, but I've been trying to fill pages with doodles and writing and um, medallions and all kinds of stuff. More writing in here where I've been writing specifically think about things which please you. I took a page out of my old journal or an old journal and because um, there were some good ideas in there and that was something I heard on a about vibrations, high vibrations and low vibrations. I don't always know what I'm talking about here, but it sounded really good. Like we could raise our own personal vibration just by basically thinking about things which please us. So, you know, the way we've probably all heard that is when I'm happy, I'm vibrating a little higher. And the thing that's great about vibrating higher is that... Uh, more ideas can come to us, like, you know, good ideas of ways to make things better, like our job or our marriage or our relationships with various people, including our children and or whatever. Um, and we're healthier, excuse me, <coughs> we are healthier and bunches of other stuff. Okay, so more writing. Have I ever shown this to you? This is my um, business card. And this is my angel. This angel was originally cut on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, black cardstock, black construction paper, I think. I don't know. Anyway, um, these are all paper cut things, which I then turned into a digital and is now my angel of creativity. So you know that make it up, choose the life you want. There are times when just making up your life, saying, oh, you know, what kind of life do I want? Oh, I want to be a happy person, and I want to have money and friendship. And it's like you can make that stuff up. You can just decide you want it and get it. But kind of, yeah. And um, the way I proved that to myself was a couple of years ago, I got really sick, and then I got really better. Um. So that was kind of startling. Inner power. That's what that was all about. Okay, you've seen how I made this. I haven't decided what goes on these tags yet, so nothing's on them yet. Yet. 
more doodling, which is more advanced than it was last time we were here. Good ideas for making up new stuff. I am an artist. I make stuff up for a living. Ooh, and this is our little faux doily. Remember we did those a couple of times ago? What is my reason to live to share all of the art that I know? You know, the more I make these videos, the more I'm extremely clear that I'm going to be alive till I'm 100 because it's going to take me that long. I have so much to do. <gasps> Look at this word. I saw um, a lettering, a book on lettering, and this is sort of the kind of lettering that people do on blackboards. I don't know why this particular style is associated with blackboards, but anyway, I like it a lot, and it was very fun to do in a tiny pen. I, might, it, I think it was this one. It was um, a point one. Well, that was great. Oh, and I wanted to show you, I put a little medallion. Remember this fold out that I did and I said I would bring you back? Um, and we could talk. Oh, there's another spot. I can do this. Sometimes I wonder if I can, and then I realize that I've done way harder stuff. Dear Go, we talked about that. Oh. I put some of these words, phrases, um, in here, hoping that I would big scissors, hoping that I would make some sort of stacked medallions out of them. So the theory is that if I have a longer pair of scissors, I will cut a straight, straighter line. Sometimes that works out really well and sometimes it doesn't, but it's okay. All right, so we have here stacks and stacks of colors. Look at this pretty color. That's a good color. Ooh, there's something else I want to show you today. I hope I remember that I want to do that because it's really pretty. Okay, where will this fit? Well, that might actually almost work. I mean... Actually, I like that. That gets my yes vote. Let's use Elmer's. It is less expensive. And the fact is, on cardstock, cardstock to cardstock, Elmer's works pretty well. It doesn't wrinkle too much. Even though watery glue, and Elmer's is a water-based glue, has a tendency to wrinkle. But it wrinkles regular paper weight way more than it wrinkles cardstock. And if you only use a little like that, then not so much. So I think I said when I was back from delivering my darling daughter to college. She's doing this really great. I shouldn't talk about my children in public like this, but this sounds really fun to me. She's taking an art history class in the history of portraiture. I mean, really, doesn't that sound like fun? Oh, you know, it does really, I find them shocking. They're so amazing. Great portraits is Julie Fafan Balzer, and I will link. She's everywhere. She has a vlog, and she has a website, and she has, I don't know, uh, the vlog might be connected to YouTube. I can't really remember. And I see her on Instagram all the time because I follow her. 
Um, wow, she is so amazing. Okay, so today I am filming this on the, what day is today? 25th of January. And um, just today, I think I saw that she had finished this portrait and it's in acrylic and it's all, I have tea, I had tea today and my hand is wiggling. Uh, anyway, today, uh, last night she posted or yesterday she posted this amazing, this is Julie Fife Van Balzer, um, portrait in acrylic and it's got like crusty layers the eye one of the eyes on this portrait is incredible she does this thing where she uses multiple colors like my ancestry is northwest europe so um my skin color is kind of that cream with a little peach with a little yeah it's kind of an orangey pink um and the the portrait that julie did i think was of a caucasian man but she is blue and green and purple and red and yellow <laughs> and all these colors and i think that's so exciting might even get me around to doing my own portrait in wild, crazy ways. Wouldn't that be fun? So she does this. She um, she does them in um, collage and in paint and in prints. She does everything. Rubber stamps. She's an amazing, lovely artist. I like her stuff a lot. We are each other's gift. So Julie Fafam Balzer is a gift to me because I find her quite inspiring. Her output is impressive and inspiring. So that's cool. Oh, it is very, very, very fun to draw with silver pen in a bright light so that it shimmers. Alrighty, that's enough. Where shall we put this? Oh, I guess I wanted it to be here. I don't know why I'm using fiber tack. Fabri tack. When I said I was going to use the other glue. <gasps> Did I do that? Oh my gosh, I've lost my mind. <laughs> I don't know that I have ever done that in my whole entire life. To put something glue side down on the table. And now, my goodness, what a mess. This is actually fun. Do you remember doing this with um, rubber cement when you were a kid? You could turn it back into rubber, less like cement. Oh my gosh, what a incredible mess I've made. How do you even do that? May this day be the day to lead us to peace, to happiness, and joy. 
But if this is the day when I just put a gluey piece of paper glue side down on the desk, really, I can't remember ever doing anything quite so. What's the, like I wasn't paying attention. I mean, usually at least I'm paying attention that much. So I have put in some envelopes here and here. Um, and so they stick out. These are some ideas I have for Etsy. Don't know what's in that envelope. I'll have to go and find out. <gasps> Ooh, we get to the fun thing I wanted to show you today. Are you seeing this? Oh, sorry. Um, it's a little out of the picture. Okay, so I have this, which is the top of... Oh, you know what I think it was? I think it was um, the the top you pull off um, when you get cocoa or hot cocoa mix or something like that. So I flattened it out just a little bit just by rubbing something flat across the top. And I still have this cool texture. And I thought that would make a superior um, medallion. But now I also wanted to cut out a circle of this paper that I painted. And I kept looking around for something that I had that was circular. It was about the right shape. And I kept coming up with too big or too small. So I thought, oh, I'll do it this way. This way that makes my brain work hard. Okay, so this is the top. This could go there, so the squishies are, or maybe like that. And then this says receive well-being. Oh my, remember I said sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't? I seem to be a little more successful today with the Elmers. I am going to use the Fabri-Tac because I have this idea that this works a little bit better when you're gluing stuff like metal and actually a water-based glue like Elmer's isn't really so great. It says, it doesn't say metal, it says fabrics, lace, glass leather, wood, and trims. It does not say that it will adhere things to the top of a cocoa can. But I'm thinking that it might. Receive well-being. I think that's pretty much in the center. sort of a theme in my life. You know, we hear about people saying, um, 
oh, I wish I was richer, or I wish I had a sweetheart, or I wish this, that, or the other, you know, I had a new car or whatever. Um, and I've recently been thinking that for as much as I wish for all those things, the fact of the matter is these things are often in my life, but I don't receive them, you know, like money and I have received the cars. I have a great car. It's a little Subaru, and I like it a lot. But, um, yeah, the whole sweetheart thing, man, clueless about that. And um, receive well-being. Well-being is mine. Having been sick a couple years ago, I sort of have well-being, health and well-being on a, on a new level of importance. Ooh, I told you I would show this to you. This grid, isn't this fun? So, let's have you see it a little closer. So lots of doodling. Yep, important. Oh, it occurs to me that I wanted to show you, wait. I wanted to show you more about this cool paper that I made. Let's tuck that out of the way. This was the paper that came out really well because it went all the way to the edge of the paper. And this paper was a little weird. I don't know what my thing was in not bringing the paint all the way to the edge. You know what I could maybe do is paint that. That could be fun. All right, let's do that with this one. But... This one is ready to go. And I was thinking that I would make another medallion. Where did I put those? Here. If you see them against the dark. So there's one. And there's two. Which could go either way. And there's three. I like this one. It's such an obvious shield. And um, it's pretty simple shape um but interesting enough i still have glue all over my fingers what was i thinking okay what's the most can we get all three of these on here maybe maybe not okay that one could go there uh, what if we did this? Okay, that'll work. Trusty, rusty pencil. So this is all white on white, and I got the camera to steady out a little bit further away today, which is nicer because my area of filming is a little better. I mean, bigger. Um, although sometimes it's nice to be close. Anyway, I'm thinking I have a white pattern and I'm tracing it onto the back of a white piece of watercolor paper. So I don't know how much you're actually taking in here because, ooh, look, I can get this closer. All right, oops. So I'm gonna make this um i told you in another video but let me tell you again the way that i made this paper was i got i have a a whole book you know of watercolor paper who's this made by oh this is a canton one i got it at that one of those big big box stores they had some art stuff so it wasn't even that expensive. Although I usually feel okay about spending money on art supplies. I mean, it's better than, I don't know. It's a good way to spend my money. Anyway, irrelevant facts. Um, so the way that I made this paper was that I... 
on the big piece of watercolor paper, I put, I got a tube of paint and I just put dots of, I think there's a dark blue, a white, and a periwinkle blue. Or it might have been a royal blue, not a dark blue. Yeah, I think there's the periwinkle in here and this color of kind of a royal blue. Yeah, it's right here on the edge. And then what I did was uh, took a, you know, hotel card or old credit card or something, and I just scraped the paint back and forth. That was really fun. And then I took the other piece of paper. Oh, this is why I probably didn't go all around the edge because I took this paper, which was very wet and had a lot of um, paint on it, and I put it on top of another paper, you know, and you rub it. And then when you pull it off, well, maybe right here, can you see right here all these little veins? They look like seaweed. I mean, doesn't that look like seaweed? It's so cool. I love the texture. It's very thrilling to me. I get thrilled on small objects. So anyway, that's how I made this paper. And then I just let it dry. And then it becomes fun paper to make um, medallions out of. And because this paper is so thick, I even make postcards. In the U.S., they can be four by six, and I believe that fits their thing. This is a heart that I made out of some sort of red and purple pa uh, paint on paper. And this was, I think it was dark blue and medium blue. And then I put yellow, you know, that same thing of putting yellow on a piece of paper and then rubbing it into the, but when it got onto the blue, it turned green. So it looks like I put green paint on, but I'm pretty sure I put yellow on. Anyway, and there are lots of, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but there's lots of little sort of seaweedy lines going on. So you can make postcards or greeting cards or... You can make Valentine's Day ornaments. We have to start talking about Valentine's Day. <laughs> My sister and I were being silly the other day. Um, I wanted to mail a postcard to my daughter. And I, um, we were driving around last Monday, which was, and we couldn't find an open post office because it was Martin Luther King Day which here in the United States allows post offices and all kinds of other people to close for a holiday. And we couldn't, my sister just rec remembered that it was a um, holiday and she was kind of carbling up <laughs> which holiday it was. So she said, you know, it's St. Valentine's Day. <laughs> And then I remembered that it was Martin Luther King Day. So then for the rest of our visit, we kept calling it St. Martin's Day. <laughs> oh, it's really fun to have sisters, right? Because then you can be completely nuts with them and they don't look at you funny. And if you right now are looking at me funny, I wouldn't know because it's one of those gifts of... YouTube television. You know, I think there really is something called YouTube TV, and I should stop calling this TV because it's not. This is YouTube video. All right, let's make sure that you are looking at the pretty stuff. Okay, so that's a pretty thing. And this is a pretty thing. Isn't that? I don't know. I find this stuff always thrilling. Oh, yesterday I shot the video of uh, the Crayola crayon melter thing that my lovely, lovely son bought me for Christmas because he's such a nice guy. 
and I was talking a bunch about how sometimes the fun part of being an artist is that we develop some solid skills using this or that technique. So we, we learn how our media works and are able to kind of play with that and make it work even better. And one of the things that was a little frustrating about the Crayola crayon melter is that I think there's a limit to how technically proficient a person could get with that just because the nature of melting wax. Although, you know, I was remembering um, encaustic painting is basically painting with wax. So I wonder if you couldn't go back in with the really uh, a, a heat, heat gun. Ooh, look at how that turned out. Really worked with the lines of paint colors going in kind of the same direction as the... Wow, which way do you like better? That way? I think I personally am kind of enjoying it like this. Ooh, a little bit. Does this look like a horizon right here where this is the earth and this up here is the sky? <gasps> wow. Who knew? All right. So the next thing we have to do, without making too much of a mess, is put some backers on these. About this gorgeous color. That one might work on that color. That one might work for that. Uh, maybe not. I have some gray cardstock. What is that? I don't know. Mm, maybe. 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 Like maybe we could do a double. How about this? Kind of a little challenging, but maybe not quite. Did. Here, let's do it this way. This way. Oh no, there's pink in here. I think I kind of like it being fiercely cool. I don't know. Ooh, this is a darker blue. Not this. And this. Actually, let's give that a try. All right. Back in your little pocket. All right, so this. It's a little curled. I was just trying to uncurl it. So I don't really know how much we're accomplishing today. It's mostly just messing around, having a good time in my studio. So when I was writing that thing this morning about who am I, one of the things I have always been is adept at messing around in my studio. So there's that. That's true about me. Oh, I hope I'm gonna like this. I hope, I hope. I 
I should be putting these under books or something. So one of the reasons I'm using um, the Elmers right now is that because it's water-based, it tends to get into the fibers of the paper a little bit. And I'm sure there's a surface kind of on top of the watercolor paper. However, it's probably also water-based. So the Elmers will get into that. And these um, cards, when they dry, have a huge curl in them like that. So then when I cut stuff out, it can make it hard to glue things down. Let's put it under my journal. And let's do a quick cut. This, get that a little bit out of the way. Now, just to be sure, do we like it on dark with gray behind? Oh, gray. Oh, we definitely like it with the dark. I am in view, aren't I? I mean, aren't I? sure there's enough room on this side and on this side to cut that out properly. And this is the moment in our studio time where we take a deep breath, make sure our shoulders are down, and our backs are straight. running that over the edge of the table can pull the curl back out of it nope that was not correct card really wants to curl. I'm going to have to find a very heavy book to help convince it of the error of its ways. I mean, I got it wet, so of course it's curling. But still, I don't want it to. And I don't a heavy book. Oh, but you know what I do have? I got some paper at Michael's. 
here. Let's have a solid color to look at. Oh, I have to put this on gray paper first. Hey, you know what? This is not going to fit into this journal. <laughs> Oops. Underneath, let it contemplate drying. This will barely fit into my journal. Sorry, I wasn't really so focused on doing it correctly that I wasn't focused on what can you see. Remember to link Julie Fafan Balzer. In the description below, we're going to let that one sit. Now I'll do this one. And then, you know what? This is probably about as long as we need this video to be today. I hope you've gotten some good ideas for your journals. And you know, I notice all the time that a lot of the people who do make art journals and junk journals use these beautiful coffee dyed papers and then they will um, ink them across the edges, on the edges of their um, little cards and stuff. They're so beautiful. And obviously, a lot of these people have superior computer skills. And they have... Ooh, um, computer programs, uh, you know, um, Photoshop and stuff like that, that will allow them to take these old fun pictures and kind of remake them into beautiful little um, cigarette cards and stuff, little note cards, journal cards, interesting photo cards oh and they're so pretty and I don't have said computer skills so that's out of my range Ooh, this is hard to cut because it's on an inside curve I'm making a mess Okay. Um, anyway, I was saying that just because other people 
have skills and color interests which are above and beyond mine or just different you know the whole uh, coffee dyed paper browns in general are not a color I walk towards I tend to go for these uh, bright primary colors and well in all honesty I tend to go for the colors that I can purchase in cardstock like this and play with um, but I do tend to be a kind of hmm a solid color person or a yeah sort of a basic color person as opposed to a person who messes around with colors you know, like inking the sides and stuff like that. But there isn't, anyway, long story, sorry about that. There isn't any reason why you couldn't do this, make these cards in um, some tans and honey golds and browns. I mean, it could be very beautiful. As a matter of fact, remember when we were making the doilies and this is uh, brown waxed paper which I just think is so pretty and I'm not a brown kind of person but I really like this it's very soft isn't it it's really enchanting so there isn't any reason why you can't do the projects that I'm doing in these very bold colors in some softer colors and these lovely tea dyed colors and um, inking the edges and all that stuff that I learned from all these other wonderful junk journalers. Wow, this came out really huge after you put the echoes on. <laughs> Very interesting. Look, aren't these pretty? So this is my final picture for you. And let's add some blessings on top. These are little diamonds of blessings which I first started using with the children in my life, but I think they're appropriate to use with you too. My blessing for you is this, that you take the colors and the shapes and the details that come into your life. This is probably going to end up being a blessing for me too, that we all take the details that come into our life and we tweak them and ink the edges and make them into the vision of delight which excites us and moves us forward. That's what I hope for you and for me. I wish you a very good day and I will see you the next time we meet here. Bye.